Hello, today we're going to talk about what's the best nail for your reef tank. Hello and welcome back everybody to the Bio Reef. I have a new science episode for you. If you haven't already checked out our uh, reef science playlist, uh, please do check out some of the videos. It's uh, me trying to dissect uh, some scientific papers that will hopefully uh, help us be better reefers. All right, so this paper is about snails. I was uh, looking to buy some new snails because I think my Melanaris wrasse is uh, eating a few of my uh, snails. And I'm noticing a little bit of, uh, you know, just very slight ha uh, green hair algae in my frags. So uh, before I went to my local uh, fish store, I wanted to do a little bit of research to see whether there's actually like uh, any science about which snails are better for uh, removing algae. So lo and behold, I found this uh, really nice paper that was published in uh, Plus One in 2008 by Watson and colleagues. And there they actually compared the survivorship and function of uh, three uh, uh, cleanup crew snails for, uh, uh, for our reef. So uh, the paper, started out with the authors uh, going to uh, <laughs> their local fish store and buying a turbo snail, what they thought was a margarita snail, and what they thought was an asterisk snail. Very common snails in a reef hobby. Uh, turns out actually that when they did, uh, uh, they looked and ID that uh, ID these uh, mollusks, they found that, that two of them were actually incorrectly labeled. So the turbo snails was, was a turbo snail. And you know, there are many different species of turbo snail. Here they used uh, the little or the dwarf uh, turban snail, I believe that's a common name for uh, Turbo Brunus. Uh, their margarita snail was actually a tagula snail, and their astrea snail ended up being a tectus snail. So, you know, something that we always have to uh, be aware uh, of in the hobby is that uh, sometimes things are not always what they seem, and, and I think a lot of uh, the suppliers, uh, you know, they're, they're perhaps are not. Uh, on top of uh, the latest taxonomy of, of what we call these things. But anyway, so they did manage to get uh, these three different snails. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted to do some science to determine which one of these snails is actually better for uh, algae control. And when, when they started talking about this, they kind of identified three key characteristics uh, of what a good snail for uh, an aquarium hobby would be. One of them is it has to kind of last, uh, live in the aquarium a long time, right? Like we don't want snails that die instantly or, or like have to be replaced every uh, week or month. And two, they have to be active uh, during most of the time in the water column. Uh, and three, they have to eat algae. So they compared these three snails for uh, these three parameters. And uh, I'm just gonna show you some of the cool results. Let's see, let's forget about the table. There we go. Uh, figure two is comparing the mortality or the survivorship of the snails. Uh, here, the triangles are the turbo snails, the uh, squares are the tagula, and the circles are the tactus. Let me blow this up a little bit. There we go, I think that's better. So the turbo snails were, you know, indestructible. 100% <laughs> of them lived uh, for almost two months in, in the tanks. Uh, the worst snails were actually the tectus snails. They dropped off really quickly that after about uh, 50, actually, well, after about a month, uh, there's only 10% of them left. And uh, the tegula snails were a little bit intermediate. So not as good as the turbo snails, but uh, a lot better than uh, uh, the tectus snails. So, uh, right, you know, from this point of view, the survivorship, obviously turbo snails uh, are the best. Well, at least this species of turbo snails that they looked at. All right, let me go to the next figure. Uh, the behavior is uh, how, how long these, essentially, uh, how long these snails were uh, active. And uh, here is the mean activity score. And again, we see this pattern where we have the turbo snails uh, being significantly more active uh, than uh, the tectus snail uh, and uh, more active than uh, the tegula snails. So in terms of uh, activity, turbo snails uh, also win the battle. And then finally, the, the kind of the money figure here is, uh, so what, what happened here is they uh, managed to culture a specific algae sea lettuce uh, on a little disc in a controlled way and put these uh, discs in tanks that have the turbo snails, the tegula snails, or the tectus snails, or no snails at all. And they measure how much of the algae get uh, uh, consumed. 
and you could see very clearly that the turbo snails uh, consume significantly more algae than the tegula as well as the tectus snails and sir and the control there was uh, almost no you know very little consumption of uh, of algae so the turbo snails so far are kind of blowing out of the water they live the longest they're most active they're most active inside the water and they eat the most algae Interestingly, they did this fun little analysis where they looked at the effect of the snail size and how much it consumed. Uh, so here the green dots are the turbo snails. And if you look at the weight of the snails, uh, you know, if you're talking about snails that are roughly around like two to four or, or four to six, somewhere over here, uh, the three species kind of all had similar sizes. And you could see that the green dots just in this area here are higher than the two other snails. So turbo snails eat the most per weight. So for, for an equivalent size uh, snail, the turbo snails are still eating uh, more of this uh, green lettuce algae. And the bigger the turbo snail, the more uh, algae it consumes. So bigger snails uh, kind of makes a little bit more sense. They, uh, well, makes it makes sense that the bigger snails will eat uh, more of uh, the algae. And that's kind of the result. So the, the main the main summary is that uh, the turbo snails lived the longest, were most active, and they ate the most algae. So pretty cool. Uh, a couple of caveats, and they do kind of discuss this in the paper. Is obviously right. Uh, we you know we're only looking at three snails here. There could be uh, uh, other snails that uh, uh, they didn't actually measure that might do better. Uh, let me go back here to this figure. Uh, but out of the three, it was clear that the turbo snails uh, did the best. The other caveat is that they only did this test with green lettuce algae, you know, a single type of algae. And they do mention that it could be that different snails do better depending on the algae. So the results really here is not that turbo snails are the best uh, out of all the other snails, but they're the best for eating uh, green lettuce uh, algae. Uh, one thing that I always kind of you know advocated for and and always thought about is diversity and i i think if they did look at different types of algae they might have find, found slightly different results depending on on the specific type of algae uh, one thing to keep in mind is that turbo snails are already kind of big and if you're trying to get something to eat algae off of tiny little frags you might actually do better with getting a less active snail but one that is going to maneuver around your uh, your frag frag blocks and and eat around the rim and, and it's not going to bulldoze their way. So I, I still think that it's important to have a little bit of diversity. You know, maybe get a few of uh, of the turbo snails, but also a few of the other ones just to kind of uh, cover all your bases. Uh, but that's it. I, I thought this paper was kind of really neat, fun experiment, and I, I did I did pick up uh, I did pick up a couple of. Uh, a couple of these uh, bad boys very recently from my LFS, uh, but I also got a few of the smaller snails. Uh, what, what I got were called Astria, although I wonder whether they're actually detectus, uh, but uh, I found that the smaller snails uh, are still kind of useful for going around tiny little frags. All right, that's it guys. Uh, if you haven't checked out my video on grazers, uh, do you give uh, do give it a look it's I think it's a very interesting video it hasn't been getting a lot of views and uh, <laughs> I'm kind of perplexed because because I think that video has some really really interesting messages especially if you're worried about uh, combating algae or, or, or you're you're trying to uh, reduce algae in your aquarium do give it a go the link is up there on the top corner and if you haven't already done so please subscribe to the channel it really does matter and I'll see you in the next video thanks so much have a good one